to everybody who is here and who is joining us. Thank you very much for joining us for the 2022 Global Packaging Connected Summit. So I welcome everybody who is joining us today. We've got some fantastic panelists, some fantastic events uh, coming up. We're over two days. Today is based on Innovation Day and tomorrow is all about Sustainability Day. So we have got some fantastic people for you. We have Avery Dennison, we have Atma, we have Tetra Pak, we have SIG, we have AB and Bev, and so many more. So do please stick around for these fantastic sessions that we have got coming up. Some quick notes from me. First of all, this is a recorded session, um, which means that you will be able to catch up or watch on catch up later on. You'll be able to find it on YouTube and we will be sending out links to everyone. Um, the other uh, important note is this is also a live session, which means that you can ask your questions. Down below, you should be able to see a Q&A panel, which means you can ask your questions to our panelists. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you some fantastic answers to those uh, in real time. So again, welcome, welcome to everybody uh, here joining me today. Um, we have many fantastic participants and pioneers really from packaging, from brands, um, and from different companies across the sphere. I'm Jenny Stanley, I'm founder and managing director of Appetite Creative, and we are pioneers in the connected packaging industry. This is our first session today, our first session, I am joined by Sharon, Sharon Kwanzi from South, uh, sorry, East Africa, uh, Tetra Pak, it's the second time I've done that, my apologies. Um, and we have got some fantastic uh, insights to be able to share with you from, from connected packaging. Um, before we get there, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an introduction as in terms of why we're here. Um, I'm sure as you know, there has been a massive explosion in terms of global uh, connected packaging and interest. Since COVID, technology has changed. We have the ability to be able to scan a QR code to activate a RFID or blue chip or um, NFC chip. And actually the normal general public are actually interacting with that now on a daily basis. So that has massively changed. In addition to that, we know that brands are looking to have a one-to-one -one relationship with their consumers. They want to know who are their consumers, who is purchasing, are they male, are they female, what age range are they in, and active packaging, digital packaging, connected packaging, whatever name you want to give it, gives brands the opportunity to really understand who their audience are and then how to better market and understand to their need. So, as I said, super excited, big welcome to Sharon. Um, Sharon, um, maybe you can just tell us an interesting fact uh, that not many people know about you. Good morning, good morning everyone. I'm really excited to be here today. So as you've introduced me, I'm Sharon Kawizi. I sit um, at Tetra Pak East Africa in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm a marketing manager and looking after several countries across the region. Um, interesting fact about me. So most people don't know this, but I worked in the nursing care environment for about six years before I jumped into uh, marketing, which is my first love. But yeah, so in my other life, I love nursing, in particular palliative care, which I did, and I did with a lot of passion, very fulfilling. And then I joined Tetra Pak in 2016 as a marketer. So that is one of um, things people don't know about me. They meet me and they think that um, I was born in marketing and I've always done marketing. But yeah, previously I worked in the nursing care environment. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, talking about the environment, that kind of matches very nicely with the campaign uh, that we did together. It only happened, I think, a few days ago, really, in, 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 in actually live terms. So fantastic to be able to share uh, something about that. I think uh, what we'll do, first of all, is maybe share with the audience some fantastic pictures and some images from that campaign. And then we can dive in um, and talk a little bit more yeah. about it. Let's play Great. that. Yeah, do that.
Well, there you got to see some fantastic pics. And I have to say, it's not every day I work on a campaign where there's a zebra. Um, so <laughs> that's pretty interesting. But let's hear a little bit more about it. Tell us a little bit about the campaign. Why are there zebras? Uh, give us a bit of background. Yeah. Yes, okay. So Lewa Safari Marathon is organized by TASC and TASC does this in partnership with um, Lewa Wildlife Conservancy and Safari Home. So the event has raised millions of dollars to fund TASC. And what TASC do is they do wildlife conservation and they also do community enhancement projects. So to be very specific um, on wildlife, they do, uh, conservation activities to protect the black rhino population and, of, and also the, the zebra. We have a specific species of zebra called the gravy species, the gravy zebras, which are endangered. So they do a lot of activities to support and, and, and to protect their population. On the community side, they have done a lot of activities to do to provide health care for the community. They have um, provided water. They have built a lot of in infrastructure for the population in that area. So really it's it's one of the, the marathons that is considered a must do for runners across different abilities. We have children joining. We have people like Sharon who just go and cheer them on. We have those that are elite runners who will do the full marathon and it all ranges from 5K marathon to 42K uh, marathon as well. So that's, that's Lewa Marathon. And so this year in 2022, they wanted to come back after the pandemic. We haven't had the marathon for the last two years. So they needed to come back. But in, in 2019, the government banned single use plastic in conservation areas, in national parks, in forests. So they needed to give a solution in terms of water. They, they, they wanted to, to partner with us to give hydration to the runners and to the audience that will attend the event. So that's how Tetra Park provided a solution that was water park in Tetra Park Canton. Very nice. And so what we were able to do then with the connected packaging was for them to put the QR code onto the cartons, which we saw there being handed out. Um, and I think yeah. they were for sale at the, at the cafeterias around the, uh, around the uh, zone as well. So that's yeah. fantastic. We were able to then connect that packaging to that event what was inside um, the QR? So the people who scanned the QR code, what were they able to experience? What could they see? Okay, so there are two things that were a first. So the first thing was the first water in Tetra Park Cotton, or rather the first water in Cotton Package. Yeah. So that was a first audience and the consumers. The number two, we had the QR code. Yeah. So picture this. We have a beautiful setup in the national park or in the conservation area. Um, it's in the morning, it's a bit chilly, really, really dusty. And so we realize people are not really paying attention to water. You know, it's cold, it's in the morning, they're well hydrated, they haven't run. And at that point, I'm becoming a little bit shaky. Will this work? Will this, you know, attract a lot of engagement? But as the day went on, by the time we got the kids who started with the 5K marathon finish and we started getting people coming to the finish line that were doing the 10K and the 21K, there was a lot of aha moments. You know, the first time they hold the pack, they first wonder, is it water, is it juice, or is it milk? You know, the standard products that we put in carton package in our region. So the first thing that comes into their minds how can water be in a carton package? You know, they open, they consume it, and it's, you know, clean, crisp water, they enjoy it. And then the questions come in. So you can actually pack water in carton package. The number two, as they're just flipping through the pack, there's the QR code. And what we did with the QR code is we aimed to target the entire um, demographics, the entire consumer segment. So Lewa Marathon, as I mentioned earlier, caters from people of all runners' ability. So it doesn't have to be elite. There are children, there are uh, people who, who, who just come to cheer on. It's sort of viewed also as a family activity. So we needed to have an interactive platform that cuts across. We had four interesting features there. The first two were entertainment. So we had quizzes and we had a game where we spot the big five in a game reserve. So we literally had images of being in a game reserve and you're trying to spot the lion, you're trying to spot the elephant and all that. 
And then we had two other features that were more on the educational side. We had a whole story on sustainability. We, had, we were able to explain to the consumers what happens after they consume the product. What do we do with that carton? After we recycle the carton, what comes out of it? You know? So we demonstrated that with a local video that we had, they were able to watch and engage. On the other side, we also had the routes mapped out in that QR code. So the running routes were well mapped out and we were able to provide information on all the hydration points. This was specific to the runner. So if you're in the track, you're able to tell I have completed 10 kilometers and the next hydration point is after two kilometers. So it gave a lot of information to the runners as well. So we connected well with the audience. And so one word, it was positive. It was taken positively. Yes, um, and obviously I was party to be able to see the, the stats and we could see that on average, it was two minutes of people engaging with each time on the, on the, on the cartons as well. So a fantastic way to be able to have um, a solution to a problem of plastic, but also to be able to educate and of course be able to engage uh, those those runners and, and those people who are relaxing watching the runners as well um i mean that sounds that sounds perfect and obviously they had um some good feedback there as well what do you feel though i mean that's a fantastic example and obviously we've got great images and everything there what do you think about east africa and, and the trends and, and and what's changing is this something that's moving forward right so I'd look at it from how do the consumers um, consume media today? How's consumption media in Kenya today? So looking at reports that have come from the Media Council of Kenya, we have seen that television viewership has dropped by to about 54% this year. That is compared to 2020 that it was at about 74%. And when you move on the internet usage as well, it has gone up. And what we realized, there's an interplay between television viewership and internet use as well. So consumers will go to, to the television when they're watching specific programs that they may not find on the internet. But when it comes to entertainment, when they're looking for more engagement, they will move to their smartphones, their, you know, their iPads and all that. So when it comes to the QR code, it was sort of an easy plug when it comes to communicating with the consumer because they're already on their smartphones. They're already looking for engagement outside the TV, you know? So it became um, an easy plug for the consumer. Mm -hmm. On the entertainment side, we catered for that because we had the games and all that, but we also had information where we could learn, we could, uh, they could understand what we're doing with our packages. They could understand what sustainability is all about. So we had a good interplay. One of the things that I learned is in our market today, we might have, we might need to have an interplay of both medias. We possibly cannot survive entirely on, on, on a QR code, but if you want to push the brand and capture a lot more, you need to have a more interaction between other, other medias as well. Radio has become stable. It has not moved. It is what it is. But what is being affected a lot is print and TV, which has been dropping. So for now, we might need to have an interplay of TV, out of home, and, 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 uh, and internet use, or I would say on the digital part of it, before we can comfortably say that we can have a QR code as a whole, in a, as a campaign and focus on that alone. But um, during, during the, the event, it was an easy plug because we had no TVs, we had no radios, we only had a pack, and it was our 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 media channel for that for that time. So it worked perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you talk about um, it being that, that packaging being the media channel, and I think that's really where um, packaging is really coming into its own. Of course, we know packaging is there to protect um, and to package um, particular products. Um, in a safe manner but also i think what you say there you know that was the media channel while you're in the park but actually that is the media channel while that product is sitting in in, in somebody's home because you know you have the ability to be able to as a consumer scan that uh, product wherever you are in a park um or at home um in the shop to be able to understand maybe some information about 
uh, the ingredients, where it came from, how to use it, all of all of those types of things as well. Um, yeah. Do you think um, do you think this is now going to move a lot more into into East Africa in terms of connected packaging? Definitely, definitely. I'll tell you what. So apart from water, remember we can't have any other single-use plastic in the in the in the conservation area. So we had our other players and other customers coming in with juices, with um, plant-based drinks, just to give, you know, to, to, to offer more to the, to the runners. And so what we realized is when they pick the water, which is what they were receiving um, at the finish line, after that, you would realize that they will go to a juice park and they'll start turning it around looking for a QR code. Oh, really? So, yeah, so it, it was interesting, and in my head, I, I it, it it looked like the right time to engage consumers on that level. And as you rightfully said, we can communicate a lot about the brands. We can have competitions. We can have engagements. We can tie this all the way to social media and and have a whole conversation with the consumers. So it, it's definitely the right time. The consumers are looking out. I wonder how many went looking um, looking for QR codes in other packages. Yeah. You know, I can only imagine in their mind they think this is standard communication. You know, we can get information about ingredients. We can get. Um, if, if, if it's meal plans, for instance, I don't know, it, you can do so much. It opens a platform for that. And I'm really hoping that as we carry on with our initiatives in this region, we will be able to do a lot more connected packages um, for the consumers. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, what you're experiencing um, in East Africa is the same. Everybody's connected to their mobile phone all day long. Um, and we're all obsessed with our mobile. So if we can consume uh, content by using our mobile to activate a package, it just seems to make perfect sense. Um, what about the barriers? I mean, obviously you're speaking to brands all the time. What, what, what are the barriers? What are the challenges? What's holding brands back? Hey, I've just started. <laughs> <laughs> just started. It's, I, I, to be I think so at this point is how can we how can we coexist? How can we slowly um, ease in the conversation from print or from radio or from TVCs into the QR code? I think that's where the conversation is. We of course have brands that are spending heavily on other advertising medias and they're concentrating heavily on that. But for me today and I think for the marketing team at East Africa is how can we bring our partners on board to see the possibilities that we have with a QR code. I mean, we can get real time information, we can track our sales through the QR code. So there's a lot of um, advantages that we need to pass on to, um, to, to our partners and our customers in this side of the world to, for them to jump into it and sort of um, get, get, to re get to experience how this engagement with consumers uh, work. But um, in terms on consumer reception, I just feel that this is the right time for us. Smart yeah. Smartphone penetration in this region is at an all time high. You know, we are seeing conversion from um, old school uh, media to digital space. And so this is really the right time for brands to plug in. Yeah. I don't know, what, do you, what, what have you seen in other regions, Jenny? I'll be, I'll be keen to, to get yeah. your input on that. I mean, what you're really describing is the only thing that's holding brands back at the moment is the education. So being able to explain to them actually what's available, the different opportunities, you know, talk about all the things that you said, you know, real time data, competitions, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that's that's the main challenge at the moment, I think, ed educating um, uh, the brands um, in your region. Um, I think that's still a big a big piece um, for other reasons. Of course, we're, we're working globally, um, you know, a, a across all the regions. And I think, you know, some uh, areas, the States, China uh, in particular, um, are much more used to seeing it. So then you can be talking more about the different types of technologies that they want to include and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, I do think that education and being able to understand um, how easy because again if we think back only maybe three four years ago 
to be able to scan a QR code, you used to have to download an app to your phone so that your phone would be able to scan the QR. Yeah. That's changed. So it's it's that education. So you know, it's 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 taking brands and 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 you know marketers through that kind of process to say actually you don't need to download anything smartphones that have you know been created in the last four years all have the ability to simply open the camera literally scan as if you were going to take a photo um and so i think that's a big one and then the second one is that once you have scanned the qr you don't have to download anything else immediately your consumer is into the experience um which again i think is, yeah. is a big piece so those are the questions that normally come up when we're having conversations, oh, you have to download something. No, you don't anymore. Um, you know, so I think yeah. it's being able to educate and explain that those type of barriers are no longer there. Um, that's yeah. that's probably the biggest biggest piece. And then explaining all of the fantastic opportunities that there and how can they use the data. And you know, that's where we get involved. You know, in, in terms of like the quiz and the questionnaire, for example, asking questions. You know, to the consumer, what did you think of the product? Uh, have you tried this product before? When do you consume this product? All that type of information that you can um, really use as a brand to be able to understand who your, your consumers are. Because actually, unless you're doing a very expensive market research uh, study, brands don't know. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, go for it. Yeah, now I'm just thinking, maybe one of the other, um, barriers would be to get the consumers to actually scan the code yeah and yeah. i would look at it in two ways it could be a barrier but there's something that you need to have in place to actually entice them to get on the on the qr code absolutely otherwise as you rightfully say it's been simplified to give you the engagement or to give the consumer the engagement without much downloads without you know much interfaces that would would restrict um the consumer on their end yes and i think that's a really important point because you do have instances of consumers who are very clued up who are very savvy who like you said you know uh, scanned the QR on the water and then expected the juice to have the QR as well. And I, and I think that once you have a consumer who's had a good experience, that's exactly what will happen. They will look for the QR on the other products and in fact be disappointed that there isn't one. So that's number one. But how do we get the consumer to do it in the first place? And I think it's important that we think about how uh, the QR is incorporated into the design um, and how we look to um communicate that because not all consumers a large proportion are and that's increasing if we look at stats you can now see that over 50 percent of the population have scanned a qr card code in the last week great well, what about the other 50 percent so making sure that we do things like um on the channel approach in terms of marketing you know talk about it on social we're doing a campaign scan um being able to have point of sale material but then also you know on the packet i mean this is this is an example of being able to kind of, you know, draw attention uh, to the QR. And then also on this one, uh, we, we, we put around the straw, which is obviously where people are going to look with, with focus when they're trying to perforate that with the straw, which says, have you scanned the QR? Um, so, you know, being able to think about things like that and then incentives. And I think that's something um, that, you know, brands use uh normally in competitions to be able to capture data well why not use it in, in connected experiences so some sort of raffle some sort of prize draw uh some sort of incentive to again encourage people to get involved in the first place so you know i think that's a really good point in terms of making sure people know that that qr code is there um as well why um yeah i was gonna just ask you you know why is it that um, in the beginning, uh, you feel that Tetra Pak chose to start implementing connected packaging? Um, as I said earlier, it's, it's all about turning the package into a media channel. It's changing. I mean, there's a lot of changes that is happening on the consumer side. There's a lot of engagement that is moving offline to online, you know. And so it's all about changing the package into uh, a media channel and getting uh, the customers or, or our partners to engage directly with their customers. You've said something that is so critical, research. You know, when you do... Uh, 
a brand equity study, it would cost you quite a, 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 a huge amount, you know. So if you have a QR code, you might be able to understand where your brand is sitting. You might be able to ask questions to your consumer, interact with them, get to understand what they like, what they don't like about your brand. You might be able to even understand how sales are doing, you know. Sometimes the frustration we get in this region of the market where we have a high traditional trade market compared to modern trade is availability of products. Sometimes you're able to get these frustrations and understand the frustrations of the consumer from just having a QR code. So um, to, to answer you, I would say that it's the solutions that Connected Package is giving our partners that we want to pass it on to them and support them to leverage on it fully. Yes, yes, I, I can only agree. <laughs> but what about the future? What do you think uh, the future holds? There's there's also NFC um, in terms of connected packaging. There's, you know, lots of things that we can talk about. What do you think the future holds for connected packaging? Look, Jenny, um, we're living in times that are changing so fast. So <laughs> I can only say that what the future holds is asking us to be more agile as we're out there. Consumer trends are moving very quickly. We need to watch this space. We need to watch what the consumers are, are what, what is exciting the consumers? What is giving them more engagement? What is giving them more entertainment and more information? So what I would say is we need to be engaged with the consumers. This is one of them, a QR code, keep engaged with them, be agile, watch out for what is changing, you know, adapt what you can adapt as quickly as possible so that we keep moving with the consumers. So um, I just feel it's difficult to tell what is coming up. So many things have changed. So many things are, you know, coming and going. And so I would, I would say, let's keep glued on, on connected package. Let's, keep um let, let's keep interacting with the consumer on an ongoing basis let's listen to them let's hear them and let's you know sort of adapt as quickly as these trends and and and, and consumer changes are coming. yeah absolutely listening and learning and i think that's probably um one of the the the, the biggest pieces that connected packaging gives you the ability to be able to listen to your consumers and learn what works um well, thank you so much, Sharon. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, I massively missed out uh, not being present. Uh, you opened you opened the marathon as well, didn't you? Um, so I, I wasn't present. You were running with the zebras. I, I got the wrong job there. <laughs> Jenny, I didn't walk. I, I didn't run. I was cheering the runners. <laughs> <laughs> I probably Join us next time. <laughs> cheering you on. <laughs> and yeah, it's one of the fantastic runs that you can ever do. So uh, Kenya is open, Lower Marathon is open to many more people to join us. And yeah, let's raise funds, let's conserve more wildlife, let's, you know, provide solutions to the, to the, to the community and the consumers that we are engaging with. Really, really great. I will definitely be there at some point. So look out for me. We'll be in touch there. But thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Fantastic to hear from you. Um, really great, really great information there. I hope you all enjoyed uh, that session. Um, but don't go away because coming up next, we have a session on NFC, NFC and connected packaging success stories. And I'll be joined by Tony Fazek and Neil Hay that is Business Development Manager in NFC Technology for EMEA and Avery Dennison, and Neil, Market Development Manager, EMEA for Atma.io. So don't go away. We'll be back very shortly. Thanks again to Sharon, and we'll see you all again soon.